Hello everybody, welcome to number 27, I'm Jack. Now, you'd imagine that it would be a slam dunk. You take one of the world's purest driving cars, you add some practicality, and you should have a success story. In fact, Caterham made three crucial mistakes that led to one of Britain's biggest motoring disasters. If you count the initial production under Lotus as the Lotus 7, the Caterham 7 has been in continuous production for an astonishing 66 years. It's known to be one of the best cars in terms of unfiltered driving fun. But it was so raw that Caterham were missing out on a big slice of the sports car market. So in the early 90s, Caterham decided to release the 21, basically, just a clothed version of the 7, in theory with added practicality. The chassis was pretty much identical, the only difference was that it had a wider front end to accommodate bigger footwells, so more room for your feet. They were due to produce 250 cars a year. In the end, they only managed to produce 48 in just six years. I think we can all agree that it definitely wasn't a commercial success. One of the biggest problems that Caterham faced is nestling just behind this car. The Elise arguably has the most responsibility for killing off the 21, but let's take it for a drive. I can tell you what the other problems were and also how this compares to its biggest nemesis, the Lotus Elise. <laughs> problems becomes apparent. Now this was supposed to be a more usable version of a 7 and it is in the sense that you have a body around you and you have a hood that you could potentially use. So if you get caught in the rain you will have a certain amount of protection whereas you will have absolutely none in a normal Caterham 7 but as you can see from the beginning the practicality is in question. Getting in and out of it is a real performance. The sill is really, really wide. Once you're in, the driving position is very comfortable, but there is no room for movement for your lower body. Upper body's okay. From my waist down, you're very tightly hemmed in. The, the fascia, the dash, looks quite nice leather covered or something similar to leather uh, I think that's plastic leather but it looks very nice then the windows there's no winders there's no buttons because they don't move if you want you can take them off you unscrew them and put them in the boot but again that's not exactly practical already even with the hood up on a winter's day it's about 10 degrees here and I'm perfectly comfortable in terms of temperature that's because there is a lot of heat soaked through the cabin so if you do end up using it with the hood up it's gonna cook you so the big problem is they made a car which is more practical but really only nominally The more power 
raffle versions. We got up to £25,000, so £6,000 more than the Elise base price. Before we talk more about how it compares to the Elise, let me tell you a bit about how it drives. So you are very much sort of hemmed in into one position. Luckily, it is comfortable. The wheel, the gear stick, perfectly placed. Primary ride is pretty good, although this is driving on nitrons, so they're aftermarket shocks. It would have been, it would have felt a bit stiffer on the standard Bilsteins. Now there is one area where this is undoubtedly better than an Elise, and that is in the gear change. Rather than being transverse mid-engined, this is longitudinal, and I believe it's then mated to Caterham's own gearbox, or a gearbox Caterham we're using. It is a different gearbox. Not just that, but the gear stick is mounted directly above it. So the gear change is lovely. Quite short, quite precise. My own Elise has the upgraded linkage from Prodomex, which is brilliant and does improve it. But you can't get away from the fact that you're sort of going through cables. This is much, much nicer. You see a little bit more reclined as well, and that whole experience, the way when you're looking up over that bonnet with the two little bulges, the fact that you're so snug in here, it is unmistakably seven, and it has an oldie worldy feel to it. So it's about 120 kilos heavier than a standard seven, but it is, I believe, 50 kilograms lighter than the Elise. And for two cars, which on paper, in terms of what they're supposed to achieve, are very, very similar. They're very lightweight sports cars, using the same kind of engines. They do really feel very, very different. Let's just take it up through the gears again and through the S-Bend, and I can tell you more.
practicality, the price, the fact that Caterham kind of seemed to either weren't aware of or ignored the threat posed by the Elise, we're all against this. I think looks is the other thing. I think it's quite a cute looking car, but it's slightly hobbled because they had to use the proportions, because the wheelbase is identical to a seven of the seven, with the, the driver very well back in the car. All that considered, I think they've done pretty well. They've obviously used some parts, pop in cars, so this has the rear lights from a Mondeo. But overall, it certainly doesn't look as complete or as modern as the Elise, and I think that's the other big problem. This drives like a very, very fantastic itineration, one of the best perhaps, of an old car. So, the front engine, rear drive design. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but the Elise represented something new. The way it was built with the extruded aluminium chassis, mid-engined but accessible. Quite a good looking car, I think. The, the Elise S1 as well. The interior had more room. It just obviously, they did it on a much, much higher budget, so it's not surprising. But, from the very beginning, it's a shame that I think that what is really a very, very good car, we're just destined to fail because there is no way that it could have ultimately matched the Elise. I think there are some that might prefer the more accessible on the limit handling that this and sevens have, and obviously a full on seven will give the Elise a bit more of a a tighter match you know in terms of ultimate feel and so on this is definitely a little bit softer but without the lotus coming out i think this was in for a good chance i don't know if they'd ever have made 250 a year but certainly it is a good car and it's incredible what such a small company and at the time caterham was much smaller what they still managed to achieve thank you all so much for watching if you have a car, one of your own cars, that you want me to do a review on, then please get in touch. This is the best way. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It really makes a difference. Thank you so much, and see you for the next video.